eat the right avocado, and that would be a ripe avocado. Okay, so I, you probably are like me. Occasionally, you have had an avocado in your hand, cut it open, and you couldn't really scoop out the flesh. It was too hard. You couldn't really dislodge the pit. Well, that's because neither you nor I check to see if the avocado was completely ripe, and you do that on the bulbous end. Okay, you don't pinch it up here. This is where it ripens first, this is where it ripens last. If it doesn't give on the big end, then it's not ripe enough to mash into a beautifully textured guacamole. The next thing that you do is, this one doesn't have it. The one thing that you don't do is pack it into a box that you're going to ship on the airplane, okay? <laughs> this is a lesson that all people must learn. Because um, that's what I did today, and I was like, the guacamole is already made. I mean, it's like they came kind of beat up, okay? So apologize for that. But when you're buying your avocado, make sure that this button is here in this part of it. It's the place where the stem attached to the avocado, and pull that out and get rid of it. But when you buy it, it needs to be there. The that part, that little button, is what protects this part from getting dark. That, if it's not there, it allows air to get in there, and then it'll turn that part of it dark. Now, so we've got a ripe avocado here. I'm going to cut around it. Twist the two sides apart. It's not too, too beat up. It's a little beat up. And then you get the, you dislodge the, the pit. Now, I do it with a knife blade like that. If you are one of those people that's not very um, in love with the idea of a sharp knife going toward the palm of your hand, then you might want to use a little spoon to do that part of it. And because these are Haas avocados, the mo that's what you find in most of the grocery stores, um, it has a tough skin, which makes it very easy to scoop the flesh out of. Put that into a bowl, and then there are two seasonings that all guacamole should have. One of them is lime juice, because there is no inherent acid in an avocado. And if you, if you add just a little lime, it's like adding a little salt, which is the other one of the ingredients that I'm going to season with here. So lime and salt. But a lot of Americans have learned the fact that the acid is what will help your avocado from turning dark. So they just pump it full of lots of uh, lime juice. And my friends in Mexico come to the United States and they go, whoa, it's, it's like a little seasoning. We still want to taste avocado. And avocado is a fairly delicate flavor. So you want to add just enough lime juice to pick it, perk it up, but not enough to overwhelm it, okay? So I've got a Mexican lime juicer. Now, this is my lime, and this is my lime juicer, and they don't seem to kind of fit together. Usually you would want this to be a little bit bigger than this, because these limes now have grown to Chernobyl size. They used to be fairly small. But you put the lime into a Mexican lime juicer, which is one of my very favorite things in the whole wide world, to cook with, you, I stuffed it in there. Did you see that, how I stuffed it in there? It looks worse from my side than from your side. It's all pleated on this other side. Okay, you put it in, in a totally counterintuitive way. Because the, your idea here is that, that you're gonna crush the lime, and when you crush the lime, you're gonna release all those beautifully scented oils from the exterior of the, the lime, okay? So you press like that, and basically what you're doing is turning this thing inside out, crushing it right down. Now most people, when the first time they do it, they think it's going to go in that way. Of course, there is only one way that the juice is going to go that way, and it's like right up in your face. And so you only do that once, and then you say, there's something wrong here. Well, maybe there's something wrong in my understanding of how to use this thing. So you flip it back around, and that gives you the crushed lime, and that's the whole idea behind a Mexican lime juicer. Okay, those are very readily available these days. So we're going to put some salt in there. And then the next thing that I think most avocados need is a little bit of fresh herbs. So we always turn to cilantro, right? I mean, that's the thing that everybody thinks about. And that would be delicious in here. But we're going to take this particular guacamole in a slightly different direction. 
And we're going to do that with a little flat leaf parsley. Now, a lot of people don't ever think about flat leaf parsley in Mexican cooking, but the whole Gulf side of Mexico uses lots and lots and lots of flat leaf parsley. So it's not a land of exclusively cilantro. So we'll put that in there. And now I'm going to mash it. And what I usually use is, well, first of all, if anybody here has gone down the path of using a food processor, perhaps a blender or something like that, there is a police force that could come and arrest you <laughs> because that's the worst thing that you could possibly do. I like to actually use a little, very, very little pressure on the avocados because I like them to still have little chunks in there. So an old-fashioned potato masher is probably the best thing. If it was a full-size old-fashioned potato masher and not one that goes in the Barbie house, I don't know where this one came from, but this is, um, it'll take me a few more pressures here to get through this. Um, but it'll still do the job that I want to do. I think my daughter had one of these in one of those plastic kitchens she had when she was little. Okay, but that's all it really takes. Now, in Mexico, that would be considered guacamole, for the most part. Because in Mexico, it's not a chip and dip culture. Here it's a chip and dip culture. And so we want guacamole to have lots of stuff in it. Because we're going to scoop it up with those chips. In Mexico, they're going to use it as a little condiment to go usually in soft tacos. And there'll be a salsa that goes on it. So they usually wouldn't even add any chili or anything because you'll get that from the salsa. But this is a chip and dip culture, so I'm going to go down that path. And we're going to make this. We're going to start adding things that everybody would expect to have in there and, uh, and a few more, and a few more things that I think are going to be really delicious here. Okay, so onion, a lot of people like onion in guacamole, and I do too, but I like the onion only to be a white onion. Now, this is not a yellow onion. I have, um, I can't tell you how many times I have gone to do demos or special dinners in other places, and I've asked chefs to get me white onions, and they give me yellow onions. And I say, but it's not white. And they said, well, it's not red. <laughs> there is red onions, and then there's everything else, I guess. I'm never quite sure what they make. But a white onion has a very different taste and texture than a yellow onion. A white onion is crisp and clean, in its flavor, and it's uncomplicated. A yellow onion is, it's got all this other stuff going on that I think just muddies the flavor of guacamole or salsa. 